in the most predictable move in football, Eric Ten Hag has been sacked. And if you believe all the reports, you believe all the Fabrizio Romano Twitter updates, you believe the David Ornstein reporting, it seems like the job of Manchester United manager is going to one man and one man only. And that is Sporting Lisbon's 39-year-old Portuguese manager, Ruben Amarim. Now, this is a move that excites me. Personally, I know people look at it in the in the Ten Hag vein of that we're just getting a similar type of manager. And I think, I'll be honest, I think that's a, a really poor, a, a lack of understanding from certain fan bases that don't watch Sporting Lisbon, that have never watched the Sporting Lisbon game, uh, and, and assessing it as that. They're just looking at it as from a very template sort of surface level. Which is really unfair, I think, on Ruben Amram. Now, I, I can understand maybe in the sense it feels like the hot new thing. I'm not sure Tenag was that. I know he was sought after, but I don't think he was the hot new thing necessarily. Whereas Ruben Amram, uh, again, you could argue hot new thing, but he's definitely up there. Uh, sought after, it felt like there was moves to get into Manchester City with them signing Hugo Viana, the Sporting Lisbon director of football. They did the same thing with Pep. They got Gigi Giristan in, and then that paved the way for Pep Guardiola to come in. So they were putting all the pieces in place. Who knows? Look, we'll probably never find that out truthfully, but that's what it seems like right now. And you can't moan. And, you know, we're getting a manager that is exciting and that I think you know, can bring a lot to this club and bring a lot to this team. And I think as well, the most important thing is he suits this group of players we have right now. I think he's more in the Tuchel style of vein than he is a, a Pep Guardiola in the sense, I think it's not so much the, like he won't wow you necessarily, I don't think, with amazingly intricate passing systems and, and what the Pep Guardiola cult has described as beautiful football. But I think it'll be effective. And he offers a good blend. The thing I like about him, which is a trait I see in the, the top managers, the elite managers in this game, is you've got the short pass and you can play out from the back, you can build up, you can offer that that technical quality, but you can go long, you can be direct, you can be... Yeah, just, just You can change pace when the game state needs to, and that's the one thing I've been really impressed with, with Ruben Amram, is that... He doesn't just stick to a certain typical format of a style. He he does play against the opposition's weaknesses and has a team that can do both things. The short passing, the direct option, and I think it's going to suit this squad tremendously. And look, we're assuming that he's going to bring the back three from Sport in Lisbon over to Manchester United. And if you look at this, if you look at the group of players have assembled on this thing here, that, that looks like a team that's built to play a back three. Like, doesn't it? It just looks like the four central midfielders, the overload of centre backs, the full backs, which will cover, which I think is a weakness. And then you look at the wide areas, which is a little bit different to how he's played at a sport in Lisbon. But I think we could see variation within that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of build from, from the base up and, and assemble a team which I think Ruben Amram will deploy. Could be wrong. This is just from what I've seen of him from Sport in Lisbon and what I think he'll want to implement with this with this group of players. We'll start from the back. We'll go with the back three first. And this was the assumption that he's going to bring the back three over. I feel like people have this real one-dimensional view of certain managers that if they play a style at one club, they're going to come over and play that exact same style at, the, at another club when they move, which I don't think is fair. I think he's got to find the blend, and obviously that style and what he produced for Sport in Lisbon would have enticed United to go and, and recruit him, but he's also got to use it to match the players he has right now. Eventually, with, with the work of Ineos, with the work of Dan Ashworth, he can build a squad and get players in that will suit this system a lot more, but it's the best of what he wants to do and what he has. So if we go with the back three, I think there's certain there's two players I think we can remove from the equation right now. Look, I love you, Johnny Evans, but the fact that you're starting as many games as you are just just feels wrong in some ways. But the fact he's been our best defender is, I mean, just tells you all you need to know about us, really. Oh, I should say, Onana and goal. No one's going to really question that. And to be fair, Onana has had a really good year so far. And I think we can push Maguire, and I said two, but I'm only going to go three, the Maguire, Lindelof, Evans out the team. Now, the only one I was sort of hesitant on with that is while Lenny Oro is coming back from injury, I think we could see this. If we go with the back three, Lindelof, I think, is the perfect right centre-back. I think he's got... Uh, a comfortable level of technical quality to bring the ball out from from the back and and progress up the pitch. I think he covers the wide areas well defensively, and I think to deputise while Lenny Oro is injured and then also finding his feet because he's still a young player, he will be the the gap filler in that area. But 
ultimately, Lenny Yoro, I think, will be the long-term option, so we'll go with him and that. And I think he's got all the qualities to play in the right centre-back position. He's great athletically, uh, comfortable with that those long strides down in the wide areas, can defend one-on-one -on -one in those areas, and he's comfortable on the ball, bringing it out. He can engage as well to break the lines, which is important when you're playing as a wide centre-back in a back three. And Lissandro Martinez, who looks like he needs the cushion of just being able to focus on a single zone of the pitch in this area. Could the back three help subsidise that? Having focus on just getting against players. And, and as I was saying about before, you need your wide centre-backs to be aggressive and to engage players in this area, which he, he is. He's an aggressive centre-back. And and could uh, be useful in that position. And De Litt in the centre, De Litt looks like he needs two centre-backs around him. The lack of mobility, the, the space he has to cover, he just looks like he needs to focus on being that aerial presence in the middle of a back three. It can focus on dealing with long balls, uh, being left one-on-one -on -one with physical strikers that will want to play with a back to goal, and and not have to worry about the space and behind so much as, as that'll be the work of Lissandro Martinez or Lenny Yoro to cover those, those sort of wide channel areas. So I think him could be perfect for this. I think it, it's what's needed to get the best out of him with the, those comfort levels around him. And we'll move on to the wing backs now. And I'm going to actually stick the ball on, on Andre and Anna for a second because this is going to come back to something I'm going to speak about in a second once I sort the wing backs out. Now, I'm going to remove Shaw. If Shaw is fit and if he can maintain a consistent level of fitness, he is in the team. It just doesn't feel like that's going to happen. And so as a result, I'm dropping him to the bench. Malassia has fallen off the face. I'm not even sure Malassia exists anymore. I just feel like I've made him up because. You know, I keep hearing his name and I keep thinking about him, but then I just never see him in anywhere on any team sheet, on anything social media. He, he, I think he's a myth. I think I've just made him up. I think he's Bruce Willis in sixth sense. And so this leaves Dallow and Masrawai. Dallow into the left wing back position and Masrawai in the right wing back position. I know maybe you could put in the likes of Harry Amas, uh, left back, who's, who's a, if you don't know, a fantastic young left back from the United Youth Academy. But. I think it's a bold move to do right away. I'm not saying he couldn't. I'm not saying that United fans wouldn't get a kick out of seeing Harry Amas. I just think if it's a bold decision for a manager to come in and do that instantly. And I think with Dallow and Masurai, you've got effective players. The, the the biggest issue, though, I find with the Ruben Amarim style in this United group is the fullback and wingback areas. As Ruben Amarim likes having his wingbacks being aggressive, charging up the pitch, getting up and down uh, with fantastic athleticism, fantastic uh, energy. Which you have in Dallow, not so much in Masurai. Masurai is a bit more technical and a bit more comfortable with the ball in his feet in central areas than he is out wide, which, and they're going to come on to this in a second, is why I think we'll see Dallow at right wing back and Masurai at left wing back for reasons I'm going to speak about in a second. Now, the interesting thing about Ruben Amron's build-up style is it's usually in the vein of a 2-4-4, and that is with... Two of the centre-backs go on either side. So let's just move Yoro and Martinez either side of Onana just for now. The, the wing-back's pushing on. And a centre midfielder and a centre-back moving into the sort of double pivot. So let's just move a guard down there now. Who that centre-back is, I've got two ideas in mind. One is that it is Delit because... You can play that pass to the lit, and usually the first line of pass when you're getting pressed and, and you're getting engaged with from a player from behind is to make that pass out wide to Lissandro Martinez, who will then ideally have the room to go and pass forward, play play a, a technically clean pass into the players in the forward areas, which is a, a massive part of Amram's, Amram's play. Or could you see this? Delit moving out into the sort of left centre back position and Martinez coming in into the centre areas. We saw it a lot with Ten Hag. He did do that with staggering of a centre back into midfield and uh, a left back dropping in. Obviously, this is three centre backs, so it's a little bit different. But Martinez, I think, has got the highest technical ceiling of players within that defence for United and I think is capable of playing a bit with his back to goal. Uh, you know, aggressive, tenacious to hold on to the ball when being pressed. So that's a key quality for him. And and he can offer a level of technical quality in the base of that midfield. So let's just say it is Ugar he starts. I think it will be Ugar over Casemiro just because look Casemiro is clearly on the decline. Ugar is the player that he got the best out of at Sport in Lisbon, and you know I think that will that will be key to maybe getting the best out of Ugar going back into the system that served him so well. And he and there's just more. I think there's more in it for United to try and get the best out of Ugar as opposed to Casemiro at this point. And. Look, I think Eriksson's been fantastic this season. I think he's offered a lot of quality, but he should realistically just be a squad player. Fill in for Mainu, which he has done while Mainu's been injured. But again, Mainu is 
the golden boy. He is the one that's going to sit in the middle of that that midfield two with Ugart and offer the qualities needed to complement Ugart. But in this area, I think seeing maybe an Ugart and Martinez double pivot could be the desired play out for Manchester United under Amram as Ru- Kobe Mainu can then move up into the left half space. You could also see Mainu drop into Martinez's position if Martinez plays in a little bit deeper and he needs to maybe push the wing backs on. And this is a, a quality as well of why I actually think, forgetting this, that it's Mazrawai that could be playing in this position instead of Martinez. So this comes into why I think we'll see Mazrawai is the left wing back, is so he can invert. And I know Dallow's done it more than than Mazrawai. I think Mazrawai is just technically better than Dallow. I think he's more comfortable holding onto the ball in central areas. It's weird that Tenag's not willing to invert him into midfield, but he's also willing to play him as a number 10. Uh, yeah. What what else can you say? Then Lissandro Martinez can maybe push out into a left back position that isn't as high as maybe Dallow was it. I think you can maybe spread this back three out a little bit. Yoro into a right back position. Uh to lit alongside Unan to play for the, the easy ball. Mazrawai and Ugar in the centre and allowing Martinez to push on a little bit higher and spread that back three out. It gives Dallow more license to push high and wide. You get maybe Mainu coming into this position here. And it looks a little bit Enzo Moresca this in, in the inversion of the fullback and the spread nature of the of the back three. But I just think in terms of the profile of play that United have. As I say, I think it gives Mainu a little bit more room to maybe maneuver into a back three. I think he can alternate with Mazrawai, who can move up into the left half space. Uh, both have technical qualities to receive the ball from deep. And I know this is an issue of you look at this and think, all right, but that leaves that that left wing back position lacking because he's not supplying the width. He's coming inside. Right. Rashford and Garnacho are two players that need to play wide. They need to to stretch play. They need to cover ground in the wide areas, take their full back on one-on-one and drive into the box, whether that be in possessional states, in, in, in full-fledged attacking periods of the game or transitional threats. I'm going to go with Garnacho just because I think... I feel like there's something coming with Rashford. And look, Rashford's been better this season than he was last season. I just think there is... It's a bit like the Casemiro Gart thing. And Rashford isn't as washed as Casemiro. But I think there's more in it to have Garnacho in this left-wing position than Rashford. And so Garnacho can play the role of the left-wing... Left-wing back, I should say... Allowing Masrawai to come into this position instead of having Masrawai push higher up and Garnacho in the central half space, which is something I haven't really seen anyone do when they're doing their Amarim videos for Manchester United. It's always uh, Garnacho in the front three or Rashford that can drop in a little bit. Whereas I think having Garnacho playing the left wing, the main transitional threat for Manchester United, allowing Masrawai to take up positions in the centre of the pitch. And look, maybe this is an idea that if Luke Shaw is fit, he is the one supplying the width on this side, so let's just get him in. And then maybe Garnacho isn't in the team as much, and you have Rashford, who is a lot more comfortable in the centre of the pitch, in the half space receiving the ball. So it's about balance with the players that are available, but I'm just thinking the team that will play more often, which just sadly doesn't involve Luke Shaw is going to be this, with Masrawai coming into the middle and Garnacho. It's still the same shape he had at Sporting Lisbon, but it's more assigned to the players he has at his disposal at Manchester United. And this is what I was speaking about earlier. He has to be able to adapt and get the best out of what he has now. And I just think this offers it. It offers the technical quality in the middle of the pitch with Mainu and Masrawai. And has that wide attacking threat of Garnacho, who, let's just say, if United decide to build up on the right-hand side because of a certain player that I'll drop in right now, which should be obvious to anyone, Bruno Fernandes, he will be the main source and the main target when playing out and getting on the ball and, and you know, using his, his passing to, to go direct and and respond to any knockdowns from the striker. And having him on the ball once those knockdowns happen to be able to hit Garnacho with a direct passing is going to be key to United's attack and setup. So sadly, I think that leaves Mason Mount out of the team. I think that potentially leaves Xerxes out of the team because he, he he can't play as a, as a sole striker. Uh, I know he did that at Bologna, but it, it's just not working with Xerxes. I think there's a, a, been a serious misprofile here. Uh, Ahmad, I want to fit Ahmad in somewhere because I think he's good enough to warrant it. And look, maybe could he do a job at left wing back? I don't think it's out of question personally. Uh, I've not seen it before. I don't know if he's done it at other clubs he's been at, at Rangers or Sunderland. But I think he, he he's a bit more defensively trustworthy than Garnacho and Rashford is to play that role. He's obviously got great pace. He's great on the ball. Could come inside and outside. He's good one-on-one. 
but I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a bit of it's a bit too overly clever to to put him into a position that I've never seen him play before. Do you know what? And I, I may get pelters for this. I don't think Anthony would be a terrible shout for left wing back if he wasn't such a baby about having to play left back. I don't know if maybe left wing back entices him into it a little bit more, but we've seen him in games last season when Ten Hag felt like he's had to move him to left back. And, uh, you know, he's visibly displayed his disdain for that idea on the pitch, which I think is, is shocking. I think it's so unprofessional. But I actually like he's not a forward player. He's not a front three player, and I think we've lost the idea that he'll ever be that for Manchester United. He's just not good enough. He's not productive. Doesn't have great pace. I don't think he's exceptionally good technically. Uh, he's got a good shot on him from range, which admittedly that isn't going to be used so much when he's in this left wing back position. But I will give Anthony it. He does work hard. He does track runners. He does cover space really well. Uh, which again, why he's so against playing left back, I don't know because he's got good traits for it. And I think, as much as I just criticised him technically and on the ball, I think he's good enough to give you what a left wing back is. And I think maybe playing on the left, we can see if that long range shooting can translate into sort of left wing crossing. That's maybe a bit of a stretch, but obviously we're not dealing with the perfect scenario. And I'm sure a left wing back, if he's going to play the left, uh, the back three formation for Manchester United, is going to be high on any office shopping list, hopefully come January, maybe the summer. I'm not sure how much business gets done in, this, in the January transfer window. But, alas, I feel more comfortable going with with Madurai in there. I just think there's there's probably more in it to start Madurai. I think he's a better player than Anthony. I'm just saying Anthony as a left wing back is an option when there isn't a perfect option. Hoyland up top, he displays a lot of the characteristics that has made Guy Ocres so successful. Powerful runner, to attack the space in behind. And I do think people get Guy Ocares wrong a little bit in the sense that I think they think he's just a goal scorer. He's just a, a box player. When he receives those long passes from deep, which will come from this back three into these areas, it's not just to get himself into good goal scoring positions. It's also to stretch the defense, maybe pull wide and get into good crossing opportunities to look for the likes of Garnacho making a run inside of him and Fernandez coming in, maybe Maynou coming into the box, which he's done a few times for United because he's got great assist numbers as well as great goal numbers. And I think Hoyland has already offered a, a pretty well-rounded quality to his game. I think he'll be playing more in a style that suits his qualities and gets the best out of his robustness, whether that's running in behind or receiving the goal, pinning a centre-back back, which he's getting a lot better at. He was fantastic with it in the Brentford game and in the West Ham game, to be fair. Pinning a centre-back back, laying it off to Bruno Fernandes, laying it off to the wide areas to Garnacho and Dallow. And, and going from there, I also think that with Fernandes maybe playing the sort of Goncava's role that that he had at Sporting Lisbon, there's more to be built on with the Hoyland and Fernandes partnership, which I have seen good glimpses of, the, the link-up for the Brentford goal. I don't think we've seen it enough, but I think within the frameworks of this system, you can you can work on something there. You, you, there's something that can be built with those two in these areas, and Bruno Fernandes will have a semblance of not a complete free role because he needs to work within the structure of this system, but it has a little bit of freedom because we know Bruno isn't disciplined. He's never going to be a positionally disciplined player. He does like to go wandering. He, he does aggress. He does he does go searching for the ball at points, and you need to find ways to work with that while sticking to the, to the system that offers. And I think maybe even at points you could see this happen a little bit with the midfield free forming around into a diamond to allow Bruno Fernandes to operate at the, at the front of that area. And I think you have that quality a lot easier to work with once Maserai inverts and comes into the centre area. And him coming in can allow maybe Maynou to push on to, to offer a bit more quality between the lines. And to be fair, that's also maybe a reason why you could see Casemiro and not Ugar in these areas, because Casemiro is a lot more comfortable playing up into the half space. And if you want a sort of an all-purpose midfield three, in Casemiro and Maynou, you have that. And, and obviously Maserai inverting, because they're players that can play on the ball in the deeper midfield three, they can play in the ball in the more forward midfield three. Uh, you know, they can half spaces, central areas, it, they, they've got a good level of quality to them. I just think off the ball is where you're going to really struggle with Casemiro and Ugar. That's where he sort of made his name with the quality he offers. And when they push defences back and they're playing more sustained periods of possession, I think it'll look fairly similar if I just push it on. Yep, it'll be, as you can see, Dallo and Garnacho high and wide, Fernandez and Maserai in the 10 positions, Mainu sort of flirting in between the deeper area and the 3-2 to maybe turn it into a 3-1-6. Uh, with Martinez and Yoro wide, 
you you are I think potentially leaving a lot of space in between De and his centre backs because of the way that United I think uh, will try and stretch the opposition from these deeper areas by getting on the ball, which we've seen at Sporting Lisbon with the way he uses his back three, and um, you know to try and create better passing angles into the forward areas with the likes of Mainu, Masrawai and Fernandez, and uh, in Hoyland you have a player that can offer the ball to to feet, which maybe removes the need for having Mainu or Masrawai in these more forward areas and have one of them drop back. I also think you need one of them a bit further back just because Ugar isn't technically exceptional so i think maybe you need to keep the ball off of him in these areas as much as you possibly can and having mazarai amenu back does give you that option but i also think it gives martinez more room to see the pitch in a way that suits him better with his technical range with the passes maybe into fernandez who's pulling off the shape into menu into hoyland or maybe even long switches down the line to garnacho or, or dallo there's nothing i don't think that amram can do about this in the short term this is going to be through recruitment over a season or two and that is fix what is a massive, massive athleticism problem within this Manchester United squad. They can't run. It's as simple as that. There, there is such little legs in this team that it, you get exploited so easily from turnovers and transitions. And I know I'm leaving De Litt in a lot of space, but, and maybe he can't afford to do that. And maybe Yoro and Martinez have to sit in a little bit more narrow. In Yoro, you have an athletic centre-back, and with his injury, I don't think it's an injury that's going to hamper that in any way. Martinez is a player that does struggle with pace, and, and that's also a reason as to why I want maybe Masrawai invert and only just so high instead of pushing up into the into the wing position is so he has less space to cover in and United can quickly revert into a back four with him in these central areas as opposed to waiting for him to chug back from from high up into the opposition's half. He's had his injury problems. He, he's not the quickest off the mark. So when you're giving him more high intensity running, I think you, you, you're asking him to, to hurt himself. Dallow, I think, will cover well, and I think that right-hand side will be a lot more defensively solid because of the athleticism and the ability to recover in Dallow and Yoro. In Martinez, I think he's helped out with Masrawai. And the less athletic side of Martinez and Masrawai, I think they're helped by close proximity in getting back into position and defending. And with the, the midfield three of Ugart, Mainu, and Fernandez, I think there's enough aggression and there's enough energy to close up and to drop into a midfield three, which I think will be our main off-the-ball shape. The only issue I find, and if I just drop this in a little bit more to demonstrate the, the off-the-ball shape proper instead of just transitional. So I think in the in the opponent's build-up stages, you will maybe see more Garnacho on the left and Bruno coming around to the right to support Hoyland as they look to transonally press an opponent's defence. You know, maybe covering the centre-back areas. You get the wing-backs pushing up into the full-backs areas to make sure they're looked after. Maybe Yoro and Martinez cover the wingers. So I think that's covered. The only issue I have with the two in midfield in these areas, which we've seen Amram do a lot of sport in, is you're asking for that midfield two to do a lot. And there are times when they played against teams of quality where the lack of numbers in the midfield has left them a little bit exposed as you're leaving Ugarta and Mane, maybe two on two on three. Where you can combat this in a back four or a back five rather is your wide centre-backs need to be willing to engage. Now, I don't know enough about Lenny Yoro to know if he is an engager. I know he's got great pace that covers him behind, but I don't know about his aggression levels and his intensity in, in engaging in these areas to, to stop maybe that ball coming into that half space. You definitely have it in, in Lissandro Martinez in these areas, so I think Kobe Maynard will be helped out by that a lot because he, he will aggress into these areas. So the work of the wide centre-backs, and maybe, look, maybe it's a case where De Litt has a bit more freedom than Lanny Yoro to go and press and go and engage in these areas, and Yoro just has to use his pace to cover him behind because he has that quality more than, than De Litt does. And then as well, I think Ugart will be a lot better on this side because we know that Bruno Fernandes is an easy trigger to go and press. He will look to go and um, press the player on the ball. And I think Ugart's got to have great awareness to maybe cover around into this area and, and block maybe the full-back pass, which will, you'd hope, be the easy pass if the front three work in tandem, if that ball goes into this area. And this just adds more of a necessity for the the wide centre-back to go and cover this space and cover the, cover the you know, the half space, the wide centre-back area. So, again, it's finding the balance. It's finding the... The pressing structure that works for this team is not going to be such a copy and paste job from Sporting Lisbon. And also when it does drop further back with having Garnacho in this team, you have the ultimate transitional threat. So let's just drop the back five back. And I think when it does drop properly deep, you will see Ugar, Menu, and Bruno Fernandes as the midfield three patrolling in front and covering the space 
in front of that wide centre-back area, and I think that will be a really hard defensive structure to break down. And Hoyland will drop in a little bit deeper, and you'll get Garnacho maybe playing a little bit higher up because we know of his, his, his pace, we know of his transitional threat, and we have players from the back, from, the back, from deep in Nunana and Lansandro Martinez and any of the midfield players that want to get on the ball to hit their passes and get the ball to Garnacho as quickly as possible. Also, having the front two up there, I feel like, forces the opponents to have three at the back a lot more, so that means they can commit less numbers to the attack, which against the 5-3 it is already going to be difficult to break down so if they're contributing less numbers that's that's a plus for United and I think it will just ultimately work with the lack of mobility we have that we drop into a deeper space quick help with the width of the pitch with you know we know how much people talk about the size of the Manchester United pitch we now have players uh, in the back five that can cover that space without leaving us exposed a comfortable midfield three uh, that can can cover the space in front of that back five and, and an ultimate transitional threat which I think is going to contribute to the many layers of quality that this United team under Amram I hope anyway will look to produce in the coming years but I'd love to know what you guys think I'd love to know what your opinions on the Amram uh, managerial appointment supposedly is like uh you know your feelings about it where you think this could leave united going forward and what it maybe means for their hopes this season like the video if you like it dislike it if you disliked it comment down below tell me why either way and subscribe if you want to see more in a bit lads